today, maybe tonight, and a little bit tomorrow, I'm going to try and get this engine started in this um, GDS Monaro. It's it's a matching number um, GTS, like I mentioned. It has a 253 engine in it, Trimatic gearbox, um, Salisbury diff. It's um, it's not much to look at at the moment, but I've got big plans for it. Um, I'll swing the camera around, I'll show you what I'm sort of dealing with at the front here pretty soon, but um, it doesn't have, doesn't have coil leads, doesn't have plugs, doesn't have a fuel pump, doesn't have the starter motor, so I have to go out and buy all those bits and pieces. I'm going to try and start it with fuel, but without connecting, or without putting in the cooling system. I just want to see if the car starts. This, um, this car... When I got it, it sat in a, um, in a storage container for, I think, maybe four to five years. This car came from Perth. It, had, it had sat with the owner over there for several years as well. Hadn't been used either. This is, I don't know, it must be 15 or more, maybe even 20 years since this engine started. So, okay. so as you can see down there, the entire car has been sandblasted. You can kind of hear it. It's been sandblasted and primed, so it's um, everything's visible, all the rust is visible in the car. The engine itself, um, like I mentioned, it's a, it's a Holden 4.2 litre 2.53 engine. It has everything with the car. Didn't have a fuel pump and a few bits and pieces, but like I mentioned, I, I went and acquired those. So some of the bits and pieces that I bought um, I've got a new set of Bosch plug leads for this, this old girl. Um, I try to get black so they kind of look original. My plan for this car is most likely not using that original motor, but restoring the motor, making sure it's a good running motor, put it to the side, motor and transmission. Um, maybe for myself at a later date, if I want to bring it back to a matching numbers and running car again. But um, I've got some big plans for what I want to do for an engine in this thing. Got to stay tuned to see what's going to happen there. Um, got a a new coil for it. Um, there you go. There's the NGK coil. The Bosch leads down there. What else we got here? Um, we have the new new fuel pump here. Fuel pump is um what brand is that fuel pump? It is just a PAT, what do they call themselves? Premier Auto Trader. So I don't particularly need a big dollar fuel pump for this thing. I just needed to pump some fuel to this little two-barrel Stromberg that I got here. So this will definitely do the job. I'll just run a hose off it and bring a hose up at the top to make this thing run. Um but yeah, we got a fuel pump there. And we've got some spark plugs. So I just got some auto logs, auto light spark plugs. They should do the job. So um, first things first, I might mount that um, that fuel pump. Well I'm um, screwed into the pump. I think I mentioned one of the previous videos, if you're using these brass type fittings, always always get the right size spanner for the brass fitting that you're using because Using shifting spanners on them just just rounds the bloody thing off and just cause you more grief later. All right, so we will put on the gasket. Um, run this gasket up onto that stud there. Actually, I'm using it came with two gaskets in the kit. I'm just putting them both on there for the benefit of this process. Got to get the fuel pump in there, get these lines out of the way. Got to get these pump in there and it's got to go, it's got to go, you should feel some sort of resistance on it when you're bolting it in. It has to actually, see how you can see that, I'm not sure, hopefully you can see it. See how you can see the pump pushing back out under its own force. That pushing back out process is the spring tension of the pump on the diaphragm. My nose 
gaskets up, start the bolt. Take that back out for a second because it seems like it seems like the bolt I've got, which didn't go in very far before, seems like the bolt doesn't doesn't actually fit in that hole. So, right, here's my dilemma. If you look at this size bolt here that goes in the side of the block that holds the fuel pump on, and you look at this is the hole that it actually goes in. It fits most of the way through that hole, but on the back these um, PAT fuel pumps the hole's not right like you can't actually screw it in the back here so I'm gonna have to drill the back of that out to suit this size bolt because this bolt definitely fits in the hole that allen head bolt was the wrong one so I'll drill this out and then we'll mount the pump so just be wary of that so if you buy these it's just a cheap pump I think it was still a hundred something bucks hundred and something dollars but if you buy these cheaper pumps quality control is always a problem and you can see on the back here See the size of the size of the hole there? It's actually tapered. When you flip it over the other side, that hole is really small. So I'll drill that out and then we'll put the pump in. Right on. So drilled that hole out. Now the bolt fits through that hole nice and easily. Um, just something I also noticed, I just had to fix up as well. See if I can catch it in the right angle. Can you see around the edge here? I I put like a mill saw file on it just to check it for flatness and it filed a lot off the outside edge and it didn't file hardly anything off the inside here so what it meant was when I if I bolted the gasket to it it would have only just sealed on the gasket right on the outer edge here so now it's filed down there's a I'm trying to catch that in the light so you can see it um, you can see a lot of filing off the outside and it's just brushed all this middle bit in here so I know it's flat now so um, be wary of that too. It's another another trap for the um, players out there. Let's try this one more time. Third time lucky, eh? Alright. Get underneath that little lever. So that lever on the end of that fuel pump fits underneath. I don't know, it's like a bolted on, like a, it's like a bolted on lobe on the end of the um, end of the cam gear and it's it just it's it's a bit elongated so or, or, or at around or oval whatever you want to call it so it just um, every time it rotates around it presses on the on the end of that um, that lever and it pumps fuel every time that that crankshaft does a rotation, it does one pump of the fuel pump. Let's just um, try and get that bottom nut on again. And washer, of course. Screw that on there. I'll just get a ring spanner that suits it. I think it's half inch. Let's check it out. Yep, half inch ring spanner for the fuel pump. The, the bottom, the fuel pump nut, and 916 for the bolt at the top. Like I said, I didn't put any gasket sealant around any gasket sealant around this pump because it's not going to be on there for long. I'm probably more doing this for you guys to watch it start or, or blow up or whatever's going to happen when I do this thing and kick in the guts. Um, I've got a socket and a ratchet here for tying that one up. tight on the block, it's tight on the, tight on the bottom bolt there, so fuel pump's installed, that's a good start, alright, what are we going to do now, so this 
So we're gonna run a fuel line from, I don't wanna trust this old filter, there could be any old bloody bug or wasp in there. I guess they can't get into that part, it's tilted off here. Maybe I'll take this bit of the hose off here and I'll run the fuel line from the filter. It's only an old filter, but maybe I'll just blow through it to see if it's still operational. No, I won't, it's got a crack in it, so I'll take it off at that fitting. Take it off up here. Can you hear that noise? It actually has a crack in the side of that filter there. If I ran this, it would have um, pissed out fuel all over the engine bay, so lucky I didn't. Looks like I don't have fuel hose. You would think that in that box of hoses there, somewhere I would have some fuel hose. I'll just, um, I don't really want to waste the Aeroflow hose, but I'll have a look in the other supply and see what I got over there in the next stash. Right, uh, so I got some hose. It's not fuel hose, it's just radiator overflow hose, but um didn't do the job just for the initial start up here. Don't recommend it if you're gonna use it and keep it running on the car. So I've got the hose here. I'll get a clamp on it up there. Just to get it running. Like you all know, these these um, fuel pumps are they're like a low pressure, high flow style fuel pump. Got to come in the front here with this one, and then somehow come around onto there. Let's cut that off there. Clamp on it. Come down there. You get it this side of that, that breather so we don't melt it on the. Don't want to melt it on the exhaust. And then I'll screw that. Screw that um, hose up over here. Where's that clamp? There it is. mentioned uh, this fuel pumps only going to pump out 8 psi which is way less than this hose normally handles um, the hose normally takes um, like radiator high temperature pressure so um, it'll, be, it'll be suffice for what I'm going to do here to run this so I'll, Put this hose on here, I'll drop the hose in the bottom of the jerry can, get some fuel pumping through it when I crank it over. Hopefully the starter motor that came with the car is good enough to... So, fuel supply in, out of the pump, into the carby. Out of this, it will drop down into the jerry can. And I'll need a bit of hose now to go between these two tranny lines because if I leave those tranny lines open and it's got fluid inside the transmission, it will just piss out oil everywhere, so I'm just going to clamp them up now too. So I'll um, get some hose for that. All right, here's my spark plug. Recommended spark plug gap is 40 thou, so I've got a, a few feeler gauges here. This is an old set that I use. I use it because it's small, it's easy to get around around the engine for checking the points and checking the spark plug gap. So that, that should fit in there fairly easily like that right it's just a little bit of little bit of resistance and you've got that 40 thou gap so there's 40 thou on that spark plug there now it's on there I'll screw it in the hole I'll just screw it in loosely and then I'll come back with the with the actual spark plug socket and pipe them all up there's one of them in there Yeah, 
these aren't supposed to be pre-gapped but they're coming in pretty much perfect at 40 thou straight out of the box um, obviously everyone's got their personal preference on what they think the spark plug gap should be but it's just a standard old school motor old school engine um, it just needs the standard standard gap in it a bit of a shit to get started but there we go one's in there I won't punish you with every one of these I'll I'll come back once I've got them all in there again that's another good one so I'll come back once I've got them all in there then I'll do a close-up on on the ignition points in the um, in the distributor and show you how you adjust them Okay, spark plugs are in. What I'm going to do now is show you how to set the points on the distributor. Hang on a second, I'll just got to undo this. This screw it down here. So there is this screw you can see. The screw you can see right here. You can see how, how I tighten it up or I can loosen it. So you loosen it slightly and you can see this little gap. See if I can get above it. There's a little, there's these two little, two little tabs down there. One, two. You get the screwdriver between the end of there, and you twist it. And what it does is it opens up that gap between the points there. So my point gap there is supposed to be, to, I think, between 13 and 18 millimeters. So 18 thou. So if I put this feeler gauge in that gap, at this angle, give you a better look. If it moves that arm out, if it moves the arm, you don't have it wide enough. So to me, it kind of looks like there must be a lump of crap stuck in there. Just let me get a, a file. So what I like to do is, I wouldn't do this on a perfectly good engine because this one's going to get rebuilt. And I'm just like I said, I'm just doing this to make sure it starts I'm um I've got the file this little mill saw file between the points here now and I'm just trying to knock off the little tip or little point that's on there that's stopping me from gapping that properly you can kind of hear it's a bit rough in there now it sounds smooth so obviously we've got the piece of it so now if I um Try and get this feeler gauge back in that gap again. It's a nice snug fit there. That's not not moving the points arm, so I'll get the sorry about the camera work here. I'll get this now. Tighten it back down again. I'll then put the distributor cap, sorry, rotor button back on, and remember it's facing over there towards that. Um, vacuum line there under here there's that there's that tab right there I was, right, I was telling you about that fits into this little groove down the bottom here right there where the my number one that's my number one um, plug wire that's got to run over the front here so I'll set the camera back up and I'll get that set up for you right now time to put the plug leads on not sure if you can see them hanging here, right? So this is a brand new set of um, Bosch Super Sports Inductive Core 238 um, plug wires, high tension leads, spark plug cables, whatever you want to call them. So I usually hang them all level at the top of my hand. Check the length here. You'll find that um, one of them is longer than all of the others. Then there's two that are the next sort of length. So the two that are medium length, I just pull them out long one put the long one out so the long one's the one I want first right so the one for number one because it's right over the back here push it on there make sure it's in it comes all the way over here fits onto plug lead number one so one is the first in my fire on then one one then two the two is the opposite side over there so one of those other longer ones that I had 
take that second longest one and the firing order rotation is this way so one two this way I'm pretty sure I'll check the check the book in a second be sure it goes that way so one two what have we got next seven eight four five so seven and eight are the back here so there need to be two of the two of the shortest ones so the two Shortest ones are these two. So seven's the first one closest to me here. Uh, seven. Back here, that's not bolted on, it's just sitting there. Seven is there. Eight is the opposite side. Then eight. And then what have we got? And we have four, five, six, three. So two, four. So four's the next longest one. These two are similar length. What are we saying? We said we have one, two, seven, eight, four, five, six, three. So number four. Is next. Push that in there. Two, four. So number four is here. Five. Five is there. After that. Six. And then three. Next time you can take swap these two over there. Bit, um, difference in length. I can go to six. That's close. I can go three because it's longer. And then what we have is the last one is the um, high tension lead that goes from center pole on your distributor to the new coil. And the new coil, which a bit of a shit. I thought it was coming with. I thought it was coming with a um, with a bracket. The bracket bolts down in here. Get that out of the way. And the coil bracket bolts down in here somewhere, so that the um, coil is out of the way. Like this, somewhere down here. But I um. I'm just going to leave it sitting down there for now because I don't actually have I don't actually have the um, the bracket for it. So this vacuum hose is just sitting here loose. I better tighten that up, or it'll have a vacuum leak. That goes to the brake booster. There was a hose here that goes to the distributor. That looks too short. I'll cut my vacuum hose for that. Back of the distributor here somewhere. Where did that loading go on? There you go. From there and to the vacuum advance. 
on the distributor. All right, so now we have fuel, spark, all the spark plugs are in. Um, everything's where it should be. Blocked off that line to the transmission. I need to start a starter motor, then get some wiring on this thing, and um, then we should be right to run it. But I need to get some starter motor bolts tomorrow. So, right, oh, we're up to the starter motor stage. But I didn't want to put the starter motor in before proving that it actually worked. So, um, I'll move this camera around so you can see what I've rigged up here. If I just get it around to to here. You should be able to see what I've done here. So if I zoom in on it, it's a bit hard to see, but I've connected the battery up. I put the ground strap, bolted it straight to the body of the starter. The positive goes to the terminal on the back of the starter motor. Um, and what, what this needs to, to kick is it needs a, a positive signal to this other um, this other pin just here. So if you're watching, if I put this thing out here, so you've got to be careful. They've got a pretty good kick to them, and I and I put this straight onto that battery terminal. I can see the starter motor kick out, and where is it there? Is there? So I can see the starter kick out, the, the solenoid's working, starter spins quite quiet. Um, I'll do it one more time for you, just so you can see. So it throws out the starter pinion gear, turns it, turns it over, so I know it's a good starter motor. It looks like shit, I know it does. Um, but I'll get that recode for this engine before I set it aside. So. Because I don't have the bolts that fit into these two holes here that bolt up under the motor, under the engine, I'll have to wait till tomorrow. I'll have to go down the shop and buy a couple of bolts for it. So it um, looks like it'll be tomorrow now. It's pretty late at night now. It's probably 10 o'clock at night. Probably be tomorrow before I fire this thing up. Um, what my plan is to do is um, put a... I've got the wires here, the wiring harness here for, that plugs into the firewall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this purple wire, which is my my trigger wire, and I'm going to put it on that pin there, and I'm going to find it on this side here, and I'm going to I can see it right there in the, at the top. It's quite a heavy it's quite a heavy gauge wire. This one at the top here. I'm just going to put a pin on there, and I'm going to put the starter motor put the wire under there, and I'm just going to make a trigger wire for it. And, See if I can turn the engine over. Once I turn the engine over, I know I'm good. Just got to buy some oil for it tomorrow as well. Once I've done that, um, we should be good to go. Things should fire up. So yeah, just a quick test of your starter motor if you don't know how to do it again. Off the ground on your battery, straight to the body of the starter motor. Positive terminal off your starter motor, straight to your, straight to your battery. Just be careful you don't hit them together here because that's active. That's a positive terminal. This is now grounded. Um, and then uh, from that wire on the back there, that trigger wire, straight to the battery and it will kick over. So you can see again, if I do it one more time here, starts, there's two other pins on it, I'm not sure what they do, if they do the same thing or not. That one does the same thing. There's one more on the back here, I don't know what that one does, but that one does nothing. So either that pin there or that pin there will start the starter motor. So this one has a lot of paint on it, doesn't look like it's been used. This one here is clean like it's been used, so I can only assume that that's the pin that um, I picked it up to. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going down. Tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be able to finish this video off. Um, I'll make it all one video, and we'll see if this old girl turns over, and then we'll we'll watch it start up. All right, so starter motor is bolted into the car. We'll get these tools out of the way. Bolts in the way. I'll explain what I've done. So I have the yellow coil wire connected up into the harness, and then in the harness here, I have that. It's a purple one, but um, that's the that's the yellow wire. So that's the ignition wire. 
go into the coil to give it power. So that coil now has power. I checked it with the multimeter. And then when I put this red, oh, this purple, sorry, this is the, the red, this is the purple one that goes to the starter motor to kick the starter motor over, like, like that. Um, not the safest way to do it, but you can see down the bottom here, I've got a jerry can down there with the hose off the fuel pump into it. Got a little bit of fuel in a bottle here. I'm going to try and um, pour a bit in into the carby and we'll see what happens. See if I can get something down that vent tube there first as well. That's a fair bit down there. All right, so let's um, give it a kick in the guts and see what happens. Got the fire extinguisher behind me, so hopefully we'll be all right. Ooh, I've seen a bit of flame which come out the back of the exhaust then. Let's just turn that dizzy a bit. See what happens. It smells like it's firing. Give a bit more. Turn it back the other way a fair bit. That seems like it's coming out of the top of the carby there, so maybe I was wrong with the... Pumping through, what else can it be? So, before top dead center by a few degrees. Then they can charge the battery. Damn it. That, that one there, like I said, is my positive. That was a bit of a failure. Anyway, um, I'll charge the battery up and we'll give another crack. Right, oh, we're back at it. We got the jumper leads on the, um, on the battery. They're, they're just connected up directly to. Let's see down here. Active to active or positive to positive negative to negative and they just run off the front of your Jeep over there so Let's give it a crack See how we go I'll take that off there Get my positive terminal back on with my coil wire And um, Got the leaky fuel there, wipe that up first and uh, give it a crank. Just keep it charging while I want it. Recap, got my coil sitting there, there's my yellow coil wire, you can see that's, um, that's oil pressure and um, oil pressure and water temperature. In the back of here I've got my jumper wire to 
jump the actual starter motor, which is to this red wire right here. Uh, this purple one is really yellow, but I didn't have any yellow wire, so it's a jumper wire. I just connected directly to my battery to give power to the coil. Put my positive terminal on, obviously have enough battery charge. Um, and away it goes. Want to see it again? As I do. Again, if you like what I'm doing here, um, hit the share button, hit the like button, subscribe if you or your mates, uh, anyone's thinking about doing the same sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, of course, for me, um, I don't benefit financially from it, I don't have enough, enough subscribers, but um, I guess one day, one day I may, um, but until then, I'll just keep pumping out some videos and keep us interested. And um, again, watch this space.